In this video, we will be rationalizing denominators with one term. It's customary to write fractions with rational denominators so that they'll be in standard form. Fractions in standard form are easier to manipulate and it's easier to get an approximate value of the fraction if it's in standard form. For example, if we wanted the approximate value of this fraction, we would need to take 1 divided by the square root of 2, which is approximately 1.414. So we know from our arithmetic lessons that we need to annex three zeros, move this decimal over three places, move this over three places, our decimal would be up here, and then we need to annex another zero in the back so that we're taking 1,414 divided into 10,000. So this is a little complicated. Now, if we were to get an approximate value for this fraction, we would just take 1.414 and divide it by 2. And we can see that that's easily done. Uh, 2 divides 14 7 times, so this would be 0 0.707. Let me just show you that this one also is... 0 0.707 if I did it on my calculator. Um, 1 divided by 1.414 is uh, about 0 0.707, so forth. So this is the preferable. Uh, fraction, notice that its the denominator is a rational number. To rationalize a denominator then, multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the radical that's in the denominator. So for this fraction, if I multiplied the top and the bottom by the square root of 2, which is the radical that's in the denominator, we would get on top, and 1 times the square root of 2 is square root of 2, which is right here. And then square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, which is right here. So these two fractions are equivalent fractions. This one needs to have the denominator rationalized. Let's do a few examples. Our problem is to rationalize the denominator. And our first example, we have 2 over the square root of 3. So the radical that's in the denominator is root 3. I'm going to multiply top and bottom of that fraction by root 3. The reason you do both is because root 3 over root 3 is 1. So you're not really changing your fraction. You're multiplying by 1. If I multiply in the top, I have 2 root 3 and root 3 times root 3 is 3. Now my denominator is a rational number and I'm good to go. Let's do another one. My next example, I have 3 over 4 root 2. The radical that's in the denominator is square root of 2. So I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. In the top, I have 3 times the square root of 2. And in the bottom, I have 4 times, and then square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. Uh, one more step to simplify here. If I multiply, this becomes 3 root 2 over 8. Let's look at one more. Now on this one, um, I need to rationalize the denominator. 
because I have a complex number uh, in the bottom here. Remember that i is the same as the square root of negative 1. So the radical is square root of negative 1. But I'll just write i. Um, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by i. And remember that if we square both sides of this equation, I have i squared is equal to negative 1. So uh, when I simplify this fraction in the numerator, I have 6 times i, which is 6i. And in the denominator, I have 2 times i squared. Well, i squared is the same as negative 1. So this is 6i over 2 times negative 1. That simplifies to 6i over negative 2, which is a negative 3i.